Play a five string. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I've, I've got 12. <laughs> uh, it's good to be able to come together this morning. Thank you all for braving the roads and coming on out. Um, we're glad to be able to come together and, and worship together. Uh, next week uh, is, is an exciting week. We'll be bringing on our new elders, so Matt and Lee Quigley um, and Jeff and Anika Henry. And so um, we'll be doing that during the service, and afterwards we'll be having a potluck. Did you lose if, e. um, if you have to uh, need a plug in a crock pot or something like that, we can find a plug in for you in the kitchen to do that with. Um, and yeah, we look forward to, to celebrating that next week. Um, yeah, and I think that is our only announcement uh, that we have. Um, so we, we're good. Is this going to be your week? I hope. It'll, right. be, it'll be different. I apologize, but we got right. five strings instead of six. So. Okay, that's good. God can work with five strings. <laughs> five. <laughs> Then burst 
bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, by with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more come close nothing can compare you're our living hope oh your presence Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Oh, your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is Please. 
voice and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence, Lord.
All right. Um, so today's going to be a little bit different. Um, so normally, you know, we, uh, we like to go through a book of the Bible. We're in the book of James right now. Um, but every year, about this time of year, um, we, we take a Sunday uh, and we uh, take a Sunday morning and we look at our finances over the last year. From, so like our 2022 year finances, we look at, you know, how, what kind of money came in, how we spent it, um, and uh, just some, some, some direction kind of moving forward with that. Um, and so uh, we used to do this as like a separate meeting. Uh, like after church, we'd do like a potluck and, or, or get pizza or something like that. And about 10 people would stay um, for that. And so I switched to doing it uh, during the service. One, I was kind of practical during COVID, but something I'd always wanted to do anyway. And the reason I think it's important to do uh, more on a Sunday morning context is uh, that, this, that when we talk about finances of the church, it's something that we're all invested in, right? That we are all in together. Like this isn't um, like, like, like we're, we are a church family, we're partnered in this together, like the, the money that comes in, how it's spent, it, it affects all of us, it reflects on all of us, like this is something we join together, and it's, that's one reason we do it. I also think there's a big piece of just transparency and accountability. Um, you know, we do have a small group of people that make the financial decisions for the church, and so, you know, whenever you have that, it's always good to have a lot of accountability and transparency, because we all know the horror stories of uh, churches and pastors and, and people that have mismanaged money or embezzled money and, and you know, just the pain that causes, the damage that causes, and, and then the way that reflects on the gospel. And so I think it's important there too. Um, yeah, and the struggle with it though is that, that obviously this time when, during our sermon time is a time we want to come to God's word, we want to reflect on God's word, we want to be spoken to, and so that can be a little harder, but, but I believe that the way we use, you know, we say often that the way we use our finances is an act of worship, and so we're going to tie some of that into like what we're looking at in the book of James. Um, so it's not going to be a typical sermon, but there are going to be some points that we're going to make of things that we can take away from God's word while we examine the finances of our church. Now, if you're like me, like, and, and you don't really enjoy finances or enjoy money, right? Like, this is my least favorite part of pastoring is having to worry about the money stuff of it. I don't really enjoy it at all. I do it, and I try to do a good job. I try to, you know, uh, just like I want to do a good job in everything, but, it, but it's, it's definitely not uh, my passion. All right, some background music. Nice. <laughs> um, it's definitely not, not my, 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 what I'm most passionate about. It's not the reason I became a pastor and everything. So if you're like me, then just the thought of, like, going over all these numbers like kind of bores you a little bit, just even think about it. So to try to make it engaging, we're going to try to make it fun. We'll play a few Price is Right um, themed inspired games as we go through it. Um, uh, because that is, I did, even though I don't like money, I used to watch every day at my babysitter's house when I was a kid. I used to love watching the Price is Right. Did you, how many people here knew near that Bob Barker is from Darrington, Washington? Yeah, local guy there, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so, so we're going to uh, do that. When we play these games, I don't do that because um, we don't take the finances here seriously, um, but I think it's, it's a helpful way, actually, for, for us to engage so that it's not just numbers up on a screen that we're like, ugh, like that. Like, it actually makes us think about it. So it's actually a tool to try to help us to, to kind of uh, to be more engaged, not because it's not taking it seriously, everything like that. So with all that kind of caveat, all that, that said, let's jump in. Um, and before we get into any numbers or anything like that, I think I do want to look at uh, uh, something from the book of James. James talked several times about finances. We haven't had any of our messages really. I, one of them was kind of uh, loosely, uh, tangentially related to finances. Uh, but James has several things to say about finances. And one thing that he says uh, early on is every good, and gi- every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Um, so James makes this assertion about God that every good gift, every perfect gift comes from God. You know, I often say up here that we want to be a generous people because God is a generous God. That our activity, the way that we give, should reflect the way that God gives. And I don't just mean that and like, so you should be generous and give to the church, or I should be give, we should be generous and give to the church, but I mean, we should be a generous giving people. When we see needs in the world around us, when we see our neighbors suffering, when we encounter people in need, our hearts uh, should incline to generosity because we're mimicking a generous God. And so every good and perfect gift, when we give a good gift to somebody else, then that is a reflection of the good gift that God has given. 
that I think that's important to keep in mind as we approach our finances is that all that we do, the ways that we use our finances, is a reflection of God. And so I say that um, because, first off, thank you to everyone who has given to support the church. Like, there is a piece where every good gift that you have given is a reflection of the ways that God has given us, and it's quite literally the way that God has given to us as a church. Um, and so thank you for that. Um, and yeah, um, and I think that we're also, I say that because we're going to see God's generosity to display to us. We're going to see the ways that God has provided us, the good gifts that he's uh, given to us. And so hopefully in this, there's worship. Now, as we'll see in a few minutes, our giving has actually gone down quite a bit over the last couple years, which to be expected, you know, we have lost some people um, from our church. But in the midst of that, we're going to continue to see God's provision, um, ways that he has given, ways that he has given good and perfect gifts um, to us. And so um, I, I, I uh, want us to be reflective on that. If I had like one theme that I want us to think of throughout this whole kind of message and examination of our finances is this, is that every good and perfect gift is from above. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and dive into our finances. So this is a, like a, a chart that kind of tracks our income and our expenses the last few years. Um, and uh, you're going to say, what are you talking about, Justin? You said giving's down. We went up to $304,000 of income. That's, you know, like more than double what we've done, done before. Um, but uh, this is a very deceptive number, not an intentionally deceptive number, but when you look at it, it doesn't really reflect things necessarily how they are. And we'll get into that in just a minute of why that is. Um, so, uh, this, this, this chart is actually not super helpful to get a good state of where we're at, um, financially, but when you run, uh, the numbers according to bookkeeping practices, this is the, what, the way the chart comes out. So this is what was on the financial sheet. Um, but we have a couple big butts in here. So we need to examine our big butt. So our first pricing game is going to be appropriate. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so our first pricing game is, where did this income this year come from? So I need a volunteer to come play this game, game for us. All right, Tori. All right, so we have four different places that our, our uh, giving came from. Um, our offerings, interest from like our savings account, just the, the interest that it draws as we sit there. Amazon Smile, what Amazon Smile is, is it's a program where you can pick a charity and every purchase you make off Amazon, your, a charity, the charity gets a certain uh, little amount of that. Every year I say, don't shop at Amazon just to give us that. I don't want to incur, I don't want to be a commercial for Amazon. Um, but if you are shopping on Amazon already, you can fill us out. But now I have to say, they're discontinuing the program, so it doesn't even matter. But the nice thing, though, is when they discontinue it, they're going to give every charity three months of whatever they normally make, so we get some free money from Amazon, so that's kind of nice. Um, but, um, yeah, but definitely, definitely not shilling for Amazon at all now. Don't shop at Amazon unless you're already. I'll just let you make those decisions. But, <laughs> um, and then property sale. Um, so this is, uh, I'm going to talk about more about this in a few minutes, but we sold our, not this property, but our property that we owned out in Birch Bay. Um, we sold that this year. Let's say I'll talk more about that. And the property interest is interest that we gained off of that sale. So what I need you to do, Tori, and these people can all help you out. If you ever watch The Price is Right, it's noisy, it's fun, it's loud. So you can help Tori out here. Tori needs to match up. These are the different numbers that go with these things. So Tori, try to match up. Which number goes with which thing here? <laughs> all right, you guys good? Man, you guys are a good, good crowd. All right. So, is offering 125389 Yes, it is. Is our interest 421 Yes, it is. Amazon Smile donations, $96? Yes, they are. Property sale, 174515 Yes, it is. 
and property interest, $4,000. Give Tori a hand. She's perfect. <laughs> now, I will say on all of these numbers, there, there were cents on all of them, but for the numbers I'm putting up here, so I, oh, if you look at the real financial statement, there's pennies and cents on all of them, but I just rounded them to the nearest dollar for all the stuff I'm putting up here just to have less numbers up on, on stuff. So, yeah. So when you break down that 304000 um, this is how it breaks down. And the reason I say it's not a very, uh, I think it's a pretty kind of deceptive number is it's really from this one right here. Um, this is our first big butt is the property sale. Um, so we, um, actually, do I want to go, uh, do I go into that now? Yeah, I'll go into that now. So our property sale. So how our property sale uh, breaks down and why it, it's listed as this $174,000 number. So little history, because I know some of you are new to the church. So way back uh, before I was even at the church, um, we had a, a congregation member who was a faithful congregation member for many years, and she passed away, and she left some, some uh, money to the church. Um, with, and so with that money, the church brought, bought property out in Birch Bay at the corner of, uh, of uh, Lincoln and, uh, and, thank you, man, I'm blanking here, of uh, Harborview and Lincoln. Um, and we had five acres there. Um, when we bought it, the intention was to save up and to be able to build there someday. Um, but as time has gone on, as our focus has shifted a little bit more to Blaine proper, as the wetland restrictions have gotten uh, more and more uh, onerous, and like it became to, to where that property actually now, when we sold it, um, without mitigating for wetlands at all, you could put one house on it um, with the, the wetland issues and everything. And so um, it just became in our mind that, that it was probably a better thing uh, for our church to sell it. So several years ago, we listed it. We weren't quite sure what to get for it, so we started listing it super high, you know, hoping somebody buy it on it, and then every six months or so brought it down a little bit and everything. Um, eventually, um, what, where we, we came is, is we were uh, listing it, uh, at, we were listing it, I, I, I might have my numbers a little off here, I think like at 250 is where we're at. Somebody came in with like a $190,000 offer, said, no, that's a little low for us. Uh, but then they came back and they came uh, uh, with this offer that we agreed to. So, the sell price of the property was $210,000. So we sold the property for $210,000. Um, looking around, we felt like that was a fair, fair value for, for the property and everything like that. Um, they gave us a deposit of $50,000. So we got $50,000 this year um, when it closed. Um, but then this is the way that they kind of helped us to get from that $210,000 closer to the two fifty. dollars is they suggested that we finance it. So we, we finance it. So they owe us still $160,000. So they have two years to pay off the $160,000 they owe us. So they have a contract to pay us in the next two years, $160,000. Until they pay that off, every month they're paying us $800 of interest. And so we have potentially up to, uh, where, where's my number right here? I have too many numbers on my thing here. Um, I think it's like thirty dollars or $40,000 when you, when you do the math. Of of how how much interest how much the interest will add up to, um, but now I can't find oh almost twenty thousand dollars that's what it's twenty thousand uh, dollars an additional twenty thousand dollars that we can make depending on how long they take to pay off um, the loan so um, that's where that's where we that we came from and that's what we agreed to so um, the reason when you look back at this number why I say this is a deceptive number is one is you know we're not going to sell. Uh, 210,000 piece of property every year. So when we're looking at like moving forward, what can we expect from uh, finances and stuff going forward? We're not obviously not going to get that every year. But also too, even this $174,000 is not like cash we have on hand or money we have in the bank. So bookkeeping wise, you list it as an asset because uh, we, we have that, that kind of guarantee on the, or the contract with the, the, the loan, but we can't just go out and spend $170,000. Also, you might say, well, why is it $170,000? We sold it for two ten. So part of it is, you know, we paid closing costs. Um, and so that was about $15,000 of closing costs. Um, and then the other piece of it is that bookkeeping wise, we already had the property that we owned as an asset on our books for the price that we paid for it, which was a 16,000. So if you look at 16,000, 210,000, that's a nice uh, return, but, um, but then you take that 16000 off of the added two. If you're not following all this, don't worry about it too much. Just know that's, uh, I'm just trying to explain for people that are like, why is it 174? That's why it's 174. So 
This number is not very helpful, though. Um, it's helpful to know what we sold the property for. It's not very helpful in knowing what our financial state of our church is. That's the big thing. If you didn't follow all those numbers, if you just like got lost like too much, that's the big thing. Not, uh, not, not very helpful there. All right, so now back to our income. So when we account for that, um, uh, and we account for one other thing, the other, the other big but that we have uh, when we look at our, our, uh, our income for the year is that we had one one-time donation of like $20,000 that somebody gave to the church. Um, and so that's not something that happens every year as well so that we can count on for the future. So um, when you take those things away, this number in red is kind of a more accurate number to reflect, you know, kind of typical uh, giving that, that we might expect to carry over to the next year. And we see it's 105, about $105,000. And so it's quite a bit lower than where we've been the last couple of years. Um, so with that, that can be a little bit discouraging, right? <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I, there's times that I look at like the giving um, as, as a pastor and, you know, I don't like to think about the, the finances, um, but you ha- it's a reality, and I do need to do it. And so sometimes I can start getting a little stressed about that or worried about that. Um, but then I also have to, to remind myself and come back to that every good and perfect gift is from above, right? Yes, our giving is down. Yes, it's quite a bit down. Yes, that's concerning. But at the same time, we had our property listed for several years, and it's this year that it sold. It's not every year that you get a $20,000 gift, but it was this year that we got a $20,000 gift. Right? And so I, 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 I think I, I kind of have to live in this tension. I think living in the tension is a little bit wise of recognizing the concern, recognizing the issue of, of, of our giving being down, but not, let, not being controlled by that and not letting that offset the gratefulness and thankfulness that I have to God. And if we're looking at kind of like principles that we can take away from this and from how we live by according to God's word when it comes to our finances, I think that that's true not just as a church, but as ourselves, right? Like that we need to be aware of our financial situations. We need to um, be good stewards and wise about them. But we don't let financial crises um, get a hold of our, our mind that we can't be thankful for what God has given us, that we can't see the goodness of what God has done. Um, and so we have to live um, in that tension and, and that focus on being thankful and recognizing the, the ways that God has been at work and, and has been good. Now, um, now, going back to this chart here, um, the other, that we have a, a smaller butt in our expense category. So you'll see our expenses are up. Now, part of the reason our expenses are up is because all the expenses in our, in our whole world are up right now, right? With inflation and everything, everything's more expensive. So that's part of the reason expenses are up. But we also had um, a big expense this year. So at, um, prior to COVID, we had started down the path of, of, um, of getting a new sound system. We hadn't done that in the 19 years since I'd been at BCF. Um, and so we'd start down that path that was important. We, you know, we're a little bit like, should we continue with seeing that giving was down? Should we continue with that? But we felt it's something that needed to be done. We had started the process already. And so we went ahead and went forward with that. Um, all right, so our next pricing game is how much did we spend on the sound system? So oh, we bought a new soundboard, new speakers, a new sound box, new microphones, new cords, um, and, um, and then a couple pieces of furniture to kind of fit what we have better and everything. So with that, um, we'll t- you know, if you ever watch The Price is Right, they have like four, you know, the four contestants, and they have to bid the closest without going over. So I'll take the first four hands I see get to bid on how much we spent on the sound system without going over. Or I'll just call on people. Yeah, Tori, what do you bid? You just, come, you just can stay from your seat. What do you think, how much do you think we spent? 1500 so 1500 All right, 1500 All right, and you're not cheating because, so Max is one of our financial directors, so I'm not sure about this. <laughs> All right, Ann, 4000 All right, that's, uh, so 4000 Debbie? 25000 And uh, Tim? 4600 The actual retail price, 9371 so, Tim, you are our closest without going over. Good job. You don't win anything, but <laughs> everybody give Tim a hand. <laughs> All right, so, so about 10000 I just rounded it to $10,000 for the, or actually, no, I did, I did do the math specifically. So, that's our little butt here. So, when we kind of adjust for those things, right, that's not a, a, a thing that we'll have, uh, an expense we have every year, but... Every year, there are sometimes are expenses that come up that you don't expect as well. 
Um, but if you kind of look at more normal type spending, more normal type giving, everything like that, this is where we're at. So uh, a, a loss of $28,000. And so once again, it's concerning. We need to be aware of it. We need to be thinking about it. Um, but we don't need to panic about it either. Um, and we need to be thankful for the ways that God provides in the midst of that as well. So, yeah. Um, I should have said too, like, this is more, a little more informal. If anyone has any questions or anything throughout, feel free to raise your hand. If I don't feel like it's a good time, I'll just wait and call on you later. Or if it's a question that I think is better addressed outside, I'll just tell you that. But if you have a question, just feel free to raise your hand because this is involving all of us. Yeah. So, huh? I'll show that later, yeah. yeah. Um, I should say, too, you know, I, I mentioned that Max is a financial director. So the way financial decisions are made in our church um, is, so we, we are an elder-led church. I'll talk a little bit more about that next week when we install new elders and, like, kind of what that means um, and everything. But we're an elder-led church. Uh, but then the elders, elders have appointed financial directors, of which, of which a majority of them are on the elder board, um, but a few not. So the, el- the financial directors right now are me, Roichi, um, Davine Figley, Max Archer, and Debbie Anderson. Um, and so we meet every month. We review our finances and, and make those financial decisions. Some, some of those decisions are made in conjunction with the eldership, like if, they, um, if they're yeah, kind of bigger picture type decisions, they're, they're made in conjunction with the eldership. If they're more of just like, what are the numbers that we make those decisions uh, on that board? Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's who makes the, the financial decisions for the church. Um, yeah. All right, so I think that that is good to move on from here. Um, so the next thing we want to see from James, the next thing James says is, let the believer who is lowly uh, it boast in being raised up and the rich in being brought low, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field. Its flower falls and the beauty perishes. It's the same way with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. So when we look at that, uh, the reason I bring that up is so what James is saying here is reminding us is that we don't view money the same way the world does, right? And in and, and our culture, especially in our capitalistic culture, not, not even in all, just a capitalistic culture, but capitalism, I think, accentuates it a little bit, um, not calling us for to be, to be socialist or anything like that, but just there's the flaws that, that come out from our culture. Um, and um, one of the, the, those things is just that money, instead of being a tool, can often become a value, right? It can be a way that you, that you look at yourself and value, like we'll unpack this a little more as we go through James and everything and, and go through these verses, but, but money itself can be a value and, and, and how you view money can be a value. Um, and I think that the, a healthy uh, perspective, biblical perspective is that money is a tool. Uh, money is a tool in service to God. And so when we look at our finances, um, then, then we recognize uh, that, that whatever God has given me, whether it's little or a lot, can be used as a tool by him. And so I'm thankful for whatever he's given me because my, my mo- amount of money I have is not what's most important. It's not what gives me value. It's not what gives my life value. It's not, and, and it's not what I value. And whether I have a little bit or I have a lot, God can use me. And in fact, a lot of times when I have a little bit, that's when I'm most dependent on him, most looking to him, and, and, and he can work the most. And that's something we see in Scripture. So even when we uh, look at you know, our, our giving being way down, um, like I think that, once again, be aware of it, be cautious of it, think about it, let it and, and make, be a good steward, make wise decisions. Um, but we don't uh, value money the way that the world around us values it. Um, yeah. Now, uh, with that, um, Roichi a- uh, asked, uh, you know, if, we're, if I was going to point out um, the money that we do have in savings. So I said, you know, this isn't a very, that wasn't a very accurate reflection of what we do have. So what do we have if we look at um, how much money we have on hand? All right. So I have another game to play here. All right, so I need another contestant that's not Tori, even though Tori is really good at this. Anybody. doesn't have to be a kid. You guys don't want to participate. We can go back to the boring way of doing it. All right, Thane, come on. All 
All right. So, Thane, what this is, these are our different bank accounts. So we have our checking account. We have our savings account. We have facility CDs. What these facility CDs are is that we have, um, we, we had people, especially when we were looking at building at the Birch Bay property, um, people that have given money specifically for building projects at BCF. Um, and so we were holding that money and it was just going in savings account with like a low interest rate, but we realized, hey, if we, uh, we're not spending that anytime soon, it's uh, kind of set aside specifically for building stuff. Um, let's put it into a CD where it's getting higher interest so that our money's making a little bit more money just seemed like a good thing to do. So that's what these facility CDs are. And then property sales. So the, this is the money that actually we have, we have so far from the sale of the property um, that from those $800 payments, from the $50,000 minus the closing costs. Um, and um, we, uh, one thing we, we wanted to do as financial directors, we didn't want that just to get absorbed in, especially with being short uh, money. Like it's easy for that just to get lost. Um, and if we have to end up using it to cover some of those things, we can do that, but we want to make sure it's intentional and that we realize we're doing it. And it's not just getting you know, sucked in to everything. So we set a, we made a different account that we're putting our property sale money into. Um, and then we also would like to be able to use that property sale um, for some special things. We actually have some things that we're thinking about, but I think it's a little premature um, to share those uh, and everything at this point. So, um, so that's all our different things. So these all are missing digits from these amounts. These are your numbers here that go in there, two, eight, six, and four. I didn't even think about what it's all like those even numbers, two, four, six, eight. That was pretty cool. All right. <laughs> uh, but your, your job thing is to figure out which number goes into which blank here. All right? And you'll get, yeah, I'll give you a couple chances. So yeah, you just need, where are you going to put that two at? Which one are you going to put in it to? Checking, savings, facility, property. <laughs> All right. That's great. Keep going. I'm not going to tell you to your right, your right or wrong until you get done with everything. Help him out, people. You help Tori out. Help him out. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. There we go. Yep, all right. So I will tell you now. Let's see, and make sure I remember correctly. So you have you have two of them right. So I, I'm not telling you which two, but you have two of them right. I, you can have a chance to move them around. If you get three right, you got to keep moving on. Three or four right, you got to keep moving on. But I guess if you switch the right ones, you'd have four right. So help him out. Which ones does he need to switch? Yeah, it is a little hard, sorry. The Price is Right studio stuff is way better than mine. All right. Uh, this, this is the way you're supposed to do on Price is Right. Say, gentlemen, do I have one right? Say that. Do I have one right? Yes, you have one right. All right. <laughs> do you have two right? No, you do not. Uh, all right, um, so the, the correct numbers were, you had checking account right is 18782 and then here, you help me out, thing. Savings, we have 144000 in our savings accounts, we have 36000 in our CDs, and then you can put the last one there, and then our property sale account, we have 32000 Everybody give Thane a hand, thanks for playing Thane. All right, you can have a seat, no prize, sorry. I was going to get prizes, but then I was worried about I needed to get to, uh, to the church and shovel snow. So I didn't stop and get donuts for everybody that played. So sorry, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so. So no showcase. Yeah, no showcase or anything like that. So this is our money that we actually have on hand. So, um, so um, when you, so the good thing here is that we, you know, we have been prudent and we've saved money um, specifically for if we go through times like this or, or to be able to do things. Um, we also do have in the next two years, 
um, a minimum of $160,000 uh, coming in, up to like $180,000 coming in. Um, and so if you add all that together, um, then we'd have uh, like $400,000 um, saved up. And so even when we look at like that negative 30,000 is concerning, but we also see once again, God's provision in that and hopefully, hopefully to help get us through that and to get us into a healthier place, um, uh, income expense wise again. Um, yeah. So this is our, our money that, that, that we have saved up. Uh, any questions about that? All right. So actually this one comes to the, this, this next verse, this is a challenging verse from James and we will unpack it in a few weeks. But when I look at all this, this is where, where I get challenged a little bit. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver have rusted and their rust will be evidence against you and it'll eat up your flesh like fire. You've laid up treasure for yourself in the last days. Listen, the wage of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and pleasure, and you have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. You've condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. Um, so pretty harsh rebuke that James has for storing up wealth, for storing up treasure. Um, and I think I, you know, I, I really wrestle with that. Um, like, how much? Is it, does that mean we shouldn't save anything at all? Um, is, is storing up any treasure what he's talking about? Um, and I think our easy go-to answer is, well, the, the people he's talking about are the people who have stored up more than me, <laughs> uh, right? But, um, but I think that we have to examine our hearts as what are we putting our hope, what are we hoping, putting our trust in? And not only what are we putting our hope and trust in, like are we putting in our, in our wealth or in God, but then are we focused more when it comes to our finances? Are we focused more on ourselves and storing up for ourselves and taking care of, of ourselves? Or are we focused more on those around us, so we're focused more on, 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 on giving out. And I think that, uh, I think we should probably always be challenged, you know, once again, I'll get to this when we preach through James, but I think we should always be challenged, am I giving enough? Am I being generous enough? Am I, uh, am I thinking of others around me? Like, for the majority of us, the, the tendency is going to be more to save and think of ourselves first. Not everybody, but for the majority of us, that's going to be a bigger problem than it is to be too generous or too, too giving. Um, with our stuff. So, um, so I think that we have to be challenged, even in the midst of hard financial times, are we be generous? Are we storing up an appropriate amount? Are we storing up too much? Um, and so the one, uh, the one piece of this that I love every year is I love looking at what are we giving to those outside of our church? Um, not just like, what are our, what's our financial situation here, but how are we ministering to those outside of our church? And you know, um, a huge value of our church is missions. Uh, is mission and, and missions. And so mission involves mission here in Blaine, but also our foreign missions. And, um, you know, uh, mis uh, supporting missionaries is a big part of, of who we are as a church. So um, uh, this will be a quick game. How many missionaries, foreign missionaries, does BCF support? I'll take, we'll do, a, do the, the other game again. Take three answers this time. Yeah, Tori? Seven. Anybody else want to guess? Ten. Fifteen and four. Correct answer, Debbie, with ten. Um, yeah, we support ten missionaries in seven countries. Um, these are them. So when I say support, that I mean since we're looking specifically at financial finances. So we have other missionaries we're connected with that we like uh, that we support in other ways. But financially, these are the the missionaries that we gave money to um, this year. Um, so uh, I won't go through that whole list. If, you, if you're not who, sure who any of them are, you can let me know. Um, yeah, anybody have any questions about who those people are or want to know more? Very, really quick. All right, so we have one more game to play here with how much money to these 10 missionaries, how much money went out from BCF to these 10 missionaries this year. And... So this game, I need another contestant up here. Anybody? Anybody? Come on, come on. Don't make me be boring, people. Anybody besides Tori and Thane? All right. Um, I'll give Thane another chance since he didn't, didn't get the last one, all right? This one's a harder one to win, though, so I'm just going to tell you that. You're off the bat. 
All right, so in this bag, this game's called Three Strikes, directly taken from The Price is Right. In this bag are, are little baseballs, and then three of them have little X's on them. If you get uh, three strikes, you're out. You're going to be trying to figure out the, no, the number that we went paid out to missionaries is a five-digit number, so uh, tens of thousands. Um, and you're going to pull out a digit and try to figure out which spot it goes into. So pull out a, pull, just reach in and pull out a thing. All right, a seven. So do you think the seven go, which spot do you think the seven goes in? If you get it wrong, you just put it back in the bag and draw again. All right. Oh, wow, that's stuck. How'd that stick? That's weird. That is, uh, that is the incorrect spot. So you can remember the seven does not go there. Put it back in the bag. Let's stir them up a bit. All right, try again. A seven. Yeah, do it again. All right, not going to stick this time. I should have just used the little magnets. Where'd those go? I was going to write it, but that's easier. So do that. All right, put a magnet on that one. That is correct. It goes in the third spot there. All right. Next one. That's a six. That's why I put the line under it. So six. Where does the six go? Final answer? The wrong game show. Uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Oops. I got it. No, thanks, thing. Huh? No, they are supposed to help. They are supposed to help. Yeah. How much you ever watch The Price is Right, Terry? <laughs> Oh, no, you got to give that to me. Hang on. Strike one. Uh oh. All right, where is that? Well, I guess I got to tell you if you're right first. A three. Is that going to go with that? <laughs> where is it going to be? Your choice. I'm not giving you any hints up here. If that's what you're looking for, you will get no help from me. Pitch, just pick one. Good choice. Good pick. Whoa! Thane's flying through this one. All right. Oh, strike two. Uh oh. Ooh. This is getting exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was an accident. Oh, they were both strikes. Okay, that. Ooh, another seven. <laughs> Incorrect. Put it back in. Ooh, no. It's getting tense. There it is again. You know where that goes now. Where does it go? There you go. All right. Is he going to get the last number? Is he going to get the strike? Ooh. No peeking. Ah. Oh, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Good try, Thane. Everybody give Thane another hand. <laughs> All right. Whoops. I lost another mag. I didn't, oh, that's a communion cup. There we go. There you go. So 73760 is how much we gave a BCF paid out to missionaries over the last year. Now, with that, that doesn't mean that we spent 73000 of the money that was given like, to our general fund, you know, just like given an offering to us. So people, des a lot of those are designated gifts. Like people, you know, like if you say, I give $100 a month to the Hecton family, that comes in. Um, we don't count that as our offering, our income, because that's designated for them, and we just kind of pass it right through us to them. Now, some churches, some organizations, 
um, will take like a percentage of that as like a fee for doing that. We don't do that at all. So 100% of money, if you give to support a missionary through BCF, 100% of that money, um, at least on our end, sometimes we give it to it through another organization that does take it, but we don't take any money out of that. 100% we send out to them or to their supporting organization. Um, and this number, 73,000, um, with that is the Potters, Alex and Taryn Potter, um, we last year kind of became their sending church. So when they left on the mission field, we weren't their sending church, but through some different circumstances, we kind of became their sending church. So all of their support almost goes through us. So a substantial portion of this, like 38,000 of this is, is their support. So that's not all from people inside our church. Some people from our church do support them. So I don't know I don't know the breakdown. So that's one thing I forgot to say earlier, and I, I, you know, I say this from time to time. I don't know who gives what in BCF. Um, we have that principle. You know, it's not like a law or anything like that, but we have that principle that, um, you know, going back to James, James says, don't show favoritism to people, is I don't want to show favoritism like, oh, I need to make this, keep this person happy, or I need to take care of this person because they're a big giver, but this person doesn't give at all, so I don't really need to worry about them. Like, we don't want to have that. We don't even want to have the appearance of that. And so we have a policy um, that uh, I don't know who gives what, and he, not just I don't know, but the financial directors, we don't know who gives what in the church. So, um, so some of that 38,000 for the potters um, is from people at our church, a majority of it is, is, is not, um, but I still count it. Hey, it goes through us. We're still in a way supporting that, still kind of a work that we're doing um, of, of sending that money out, so I can still celebrate uh, with that. Um, when you look at, so, so, um, so 73,000 went out, um, about 53,000 of the 73,000 then are donations, are, are people either in the church or outside of the church that are giving to missionaries that we just take that money in and then uh, send it out to them. So that's about $20,000 of it that is given um, from us as a church, as an organization, not, you know, uh, uh, not from people's donations. Does that make sense? You guys following what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, uh, Yeah. So that's, that's how much we spend on missions uh, each year, 73760 um, I think it's cool that like, we're a small church and, and, and we are able to do, to, to do that. Even, you know, I, I still count the money that people give, especially for the people that are in their congregation, like the stuff that you guys support and everything. I still count that as like our church supporting those missionaries um, because we're, we're helping to support them by, by doing that and everything. And so that excites me that we're able to do that. Even, even if I just look at the $20,000 that comes from organizationally BCF, that's exciting to me um, given you know, where we're at financially. That's a, that's a, a substantial amount, and I, I get excited um, about that as well. Um, all right, and so then with that, the other number I like to look at, going back to James, not hoarding up treasure for ourselves, thinking about others with it, is how much money BCF has spent outside his walls. We're not going to play a game with this, but if you add up missions, if you add up like compassion fund giving, where that actually does help people in our congregation, um, but it's it's with you know it's not it's not really building up like our congregation, our Sunday meetings, anything like that. It's like helping them with financial needs that they have. When you add up benevolence, the ways that we help out people in the community that are in need. When you add up um, the us giving to organizations like CAP or the Bridge that help others in our, our community, when you add up like stuff we spend um, in outreach, like things like our Christmas e- our Christmas booth, when you add up all that stuff and stuff that's not benefiting us, but we're spending it on other people, um, when you add all of that up, we spend eighty two thousand dollars nine hundred sixty five after all. Well. So that includes the seventy three thousand. So it's a nine thousand additional that we spend on all that other stuff. Um, and so that's another thing that I get excited about as a church, that, that we spend the, the, that much money in some way or another comes from BCF and goes out uh, to outside of our walls. And I feel good about that, and I, I feel excited about that. Once again, even if you take off the 50000 that um, is just direct donations where people give us money um, and we send it out just as they, they ask us to to missionaries, even if you take that off, it's still 30000 um, that, we're, that we're spending outside our walls as a church. And I feel like that's a, an encouraging thing um, uh, for us to do, and I'm excited that we spend uh, that much. Uh, yeah. And that's, you know, that, that can be one of the hard things is like, we don't want to have to stop doing that. We don't want to have to stop spending the money that we do inside our walls either. And, but if, you know, if our financial situation has changed, then we obviously can't just keep you know, spending, overspending every year, like that's not a healthy thing to do either. So we have to start making decisions about where do we stop spending and, and, and where do we, do we cut things? And so that's a hard, those are hard decisions to make. And so I think we can pray as a congregation that, 
that God will continue to provide for us, that we don't have to make those hard and difficult decisions, and that we can continue to do all the things that we have, or that God would give us a wisdom and like, this is, you know, you think that you're, you're spending healthily here, but you're not, you know, and, and, and having wisdom and, and where we do need to change our spending as well. So I think uh, prayer for those things is good, and I ask that from, from all of us as a congregation as well. Um, and, and then once again, you know, like we never want anybody to feel, I don't want anyone to give because they feel um, coerced into giving or to give because, um, you know, like, like, uh, uh, like I want us to give. I, I, I think a healthy congregation is a giving congregation. And I encourage you, if you're not giving, to give. I'll never know if you don't. I'll never, you know, like there's not going to be any like condemnation. There's not any, any coercion. But I think that if, if we come, if we, if we have this view that we participate in this together, then we should all be giving together. We should all be partnering together. And we should, and we should all be giving together. So I'd encourage you just to at least pray about that and consider that um, as well. So, um, yeah, that kind of concludes that. We're going to move into our communion time, but any questions in regards to finances before we move into our communion time? Yeah, Debbie? Um, so some people have given money that this, it'll just say Peru on it, because we, since we have so many missionaries that we support there, and they'll like let us kind of designate as we need, and so a lot of times we'll let that kind of accumulate. And then if there's a special project that comes up, so like during COVID, um, Osmar was handing out food uh, to people at Iquitos. And so we took $1,000 from uh, Peru General and, and gave it and donated it to, so that he could give out food to people that are in Iquitos that couldn't leave their homes and, and everything. So um, yeah, so that's, that's what the Peru General tends to do. Any other questions? All right. Um, yeah, so like I said, the theme for today is every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. And so we are reminded of the gift that God has given, and that affects our whole value when it comes to money. That affects our whole worldview when it comes to money. It affects our whole worldview when it comes to how we use those things. And so just like everything else, when it comes to our finances, we want the cross to be at the center, that the good and perfect gift of Jesus is what moves and motivates us. That in the same way that he generously and sacrificially gave his blood, that we want to be generous and sacrificial givers uh, as well. And so um, as you come up and receive communion today, that's what I encourage us to reflect on, is just the generosity of God and that, how that spurs on and encourages our own generosity. So you can come up and take these and take them back to your seats, and then we'll hold them and take them together.
God, your word says that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, God. God, we know just the temptations that money can bring. And we see the damage that, that the love of money can cause and greed, exploitation. Just hearts that are focused on the values, the things that are not valued in your kingdom, God. And God, we're reminded by the gift of Jesus that we live according to a different ethic. We don't hoard. We don't do, view money as something that gives us value. But that we are supposed to be generous as you have been generous to us. We take this bread and we remember the generosity of you giving your son for us to bring us into your kingdom. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And God, we thank you for the greatest gift of Jesus who suffered and died to give us life. So God, we pray we would live that life that he came to give us, a life that puts others first, that sees money as a tool to worship you, to help others, and that we would be a generous people who serves an even more generous God. We take this cup and we say thank you for the generosity of Christ. And so, God, I pray with those things in mind for the finances of BCF, God. Obviously, um, we're not where we would like to be with that, and so we pray um, that you would be at work, God, that you would continue to provide for us, maybe even in unexpected ways. Pray if you're stirring in anybody's hearts that they would be responsive to what you're stirring to them. Um, but I also pray that we would not be ruled by anxiety or worry about finances. God, help us to be good stewards. Help us to listen to your spirit. Help us to be led by you. And may we live as a church in service to you, God. God, I pray um, not just for the organization of BCF, but that would be true of each member as well. That we would not be anxious because of finances, but that we would look to you, that we would be wise, that we would we would use our finances in ways that honor you and worship you, um, but that we would uh, trust you and trust your provision and see your provision, God. God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift that you give to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grace be with you.